What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out serious WWE moments. Now we've seen this in the past where something happened, unfortunately, you know, during a live show, you know, live event, whatever you want to call it, and you know, they have to kind of call an audible and let the the fans know this is not part of the show. Something seriously happened, and it's usually kind of a tough moment for the announcers you know the commentators to relay the message especially if it's you know something of a serious injury or a serious situation and they usually have to be able to control their emotions and convey to the audience to people at home this happened this is not part of the actual show this was unforeseen and you know it can be a jarring moment that's the crazy thing about live tv you know some crazy stuff can happen and then there's some situations where you know stuff that's out of your control very serious uh uh situations can occur and you kind of got to be able to you know mentally prepare yourself to tell the world what's really going on so we're going to check out some of the serious moments that have happened in wwe appreciate all love support let's get right into this one man in October 2018, Monday Night Raw kicked off like normal with the Universal Champion, Roman Reigns. Then, the big dog hit us with this. My real name is Joe, mm -hmm. and I've been living with leukemia for 11 years. And unfortunately, it's back. And right now, the best thing for me to do is to go home to focus on my family and my health. And I'm going to have to relinquish the Universal Championship. Sad After situation, man. Breaking news, Reigns was joined by Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Thankfully, Roman did return about three months later to a huge ovation. I'm in remission, y'all. Mm-hmm. It was a beautiful moment. Hacksaw Jim Duggan always came to the ring happy and was a lovable goofball. However, in September 1998, the future WWE Hall of Famer came to the ring to make a very serious and sad announcement. Just very recently, I, I went to the doctor and I was diagnosed with cancer. And nothing else seems important to me right now. I just don't want to leave my little girls alone. I just want to tell you folks, Damn. go to bed tonight, hold your children a little closer because, God, they're important. Thankfully, the surgery was successful, mm -hmm. and after several months, Jim Duggan was able to return to the ring. Unfortunately, not all serious moments have a happy ending. Yeah. There's only been one time that a WWE wrestler has died during a live broadcast. The victim was Owen Hart, mm -hmm. who was playing a superhero character named the Blue Blazer. It was meant to be lowered from the arena ceiling into the ring. However, the harness holding Hart snapped, and he fell to his death. WWE was live on the air when this happened, yep. and one of the commentators, Jim Ross, had the unfortunate task of telling the viewers what had happened. Uh, this is not a part of the uh, entertainment here tonight. This is as real uh, as it real can be here. We're here to entertain and have fun, but this is neither. No, it's, uh, it's, it doesn't look good at all. Later in the broadcast, Jim Ross would give a very sad update. Yeah. I have the unfortunate responsibility let everyone know that Owen Hart has died. Owen Hart has tragically died from that accident here tonight. Monday and it's crazy because I think uh, I had watched the documentary talking about it. And Jim Ross was like, yeah, we had came back from a certain segment and we was about to come back on air. And he was like, hey, Vince, I think it was Vince or somebody in his head said, it was like, hey, just wanted to let you know that Owen Hart had died. And you're on in 10, 9. So imagine you getting that news. And obviously, you know, people cared about him. I'm sure Jim cared about him. You know, he was a love guy in WWE. Imagine you hearing that news of someone. You literally watched someone's death. And then you got to go on air within 10 seconds. So you have to mentally process that. Get ready to go on air. Potentially tell the world what's going on while still trying to wrap your mind around the fact that you just watched one of your colleagues, one of your friends die in the ring. And he had to do that as with a straight face as best as he could. So it's, it's a it's an unfortunate situation, man. Monday Night Raw aired the following day and the show was turned into a tribute to Owen Hart and wrestlers shared their memories of him. In this business, I guess you got a lot of acquaintances but very few friends. <laughs> Nick. 
Mark Henry even wrote a poem for Owen Hart, and try listening to this without getting a little teary. Shout out to Mark Henry, man. The pain you feel as your eyes swell and tears fill up in the wells. The burn starts to choke you up, words come out slow and shaking. You close your eyes and wonder why that there's a burning when you cry. When Owen left, it felt like hands around my throat. I couldn't talk, I couldn't see. The burn overwhelmed me. My heart is heavy. This is why you get the burn when you cry. It digs down deep, you cannot sleep. You toss and turn in your sheets. Awaken with sobs and wet pillowcases. You wander aimlessly, look into the sky. Hell. You feel the burn when you cry. To end the night, Stone Cold Steve Austin came out to the rain, grabbed a beer, and gave one last toast to Owen Hart. Sadly, Owen's death wasn't the last time fans would find out on air that a WWE wrestler had died. Mm -hmm. The June 25th, 2007 episode of Raw will live on in infamy. Yeah. Rather than opening with loud pyro and a crowd full of energetic fans, the show broadcasted from an empty arena with Vince McMahon standing alone in the ring. McMahon then shared some disturbing news. Tonight's storyline was to have been the alleged demise of my character, Mr. McMahon. Yeah, However, I remember in this. reality, WWE superstar Chris Benoit his wife Nancy, and their son Daniel are dead. Their bodies were discovered this afternoon in their new suburban Atlanta home. Like with Owen Hart, Monday Night Raw was turned into a tribute show uh -huh. to Chris Benoit. Unfortunately, this would become one of the most infamous shows WWE ever hosted. Because they didn't even know what happened. No one really knew the extent of what really happened. It's still one of the most tragic stories in wrestling history. Not just WWE, just in wrestling. How it, it just, it just horrible. No one knew until we actually all got the information and then we realized how even more horrible the situation ended up being. Ed, wrestlers would share their thoughts and memories of Benoit, including Edge. I have three people in this industry that I feel I can go to, talk to, and two of them are, are gone. gone now. <laughs> That's like tough, I said, bro. though, this show quickly ended up becoming one of WWE's most infamous. Not long after paying tribute to Chris Benoit, it was discovered that Benoit was the one who had murdered his wife and son yeah. and then took his own life. This broadcast of Monday Night Raw was quickly erased and WWE rarely acknowledges Chris Benoit's existence yeah. over 15 years later. One yep. of the most real moments in WWE was the infamous Montreal Screwjob. It all took place on November 9th, 1997. Classic moment. Pay -per -view event in Quebec, Canada. The WWE champion at the time Bret Hart was taking on Shawn Michaels in Bret's final match before going to WWE's rival, WCW. Depending on who you listen to, Bret didn't want to lose because it was in his home country, or he didn't want to lose because Shawn Michaels said he would be willing to lose to Bret. In any case, Bret Hart was told he would not be losing the WWE Championship, but Vince McMahon, Shawn Michaels, mm -hmm. and others secretly devised another plan. During the match, HBK put the hitman in a sharpshooter, only for the referee to call for the bell, even though Bret Hart hadn't Never submitted. Yeah. Bret had been warned that something might happen, and as soon as the referee calls for the bell, you can see Bret realize that his worst fears have become a reality. I reached around to grab Shawn's leg, and I could hear someone say, ring the bell. That's when I knew it was Vince McMahon. I finally realized that they screwed me. Mm -hmm. they really screwed me, the lousy bastards. Bret Hart was mad at WWE and Vince McMahon for double-crossing him, and rightfully so. After an incident like this, it seemed impossible for the two sides to ever work again. However, that was not the case. Roughly nine years after the Montreal screw job, Bret Hart returned to WWE and was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Even more surprising was that yeah. Bret Hart actually thanked Vince McMahon during his speech. And I want to first of all thank the McMahons, especially Vince, for giving me the chance to work on his canvas. You hear the boos. You hear the boos. But it's it's that it's that respect thing. Hate them or love them, you know. A lot of people had gotten opportunities because of Vince. So I get the respect thing. But we all, you know, a lot of us fans know, and I'm sure people behind the scenes know, you know, Vince is uh a uh interesting individual with some of the things he has said and or done to other people in the business and outside the business. So I get it why people were booing, but I understand why he still gave him the respect. It, you know, it it's they have a different relationship than just us fans seeing it from the outside looking in. 
15 years later, WWE returned to Montreal and something even more serious happened. Jerry Lawler was doing commentary with Michael Cole like normal. Then, suddenly, uh -huh. Jerry began snoring into the mic. <sighs> As it turned out, Lawler was having a heart attack and became unconscious. Uh -huh. WWE's medical staff quickly went over to check on Lawler and were doing their best not to panic anyone. Yeah. Jerry was soon rushed out of the arena and given emergency medical treatment. I remember this. After a commercial break, Michael Cole had to inform viewers what was going on. Ladies and gentlemen, I do want to, to uh, preface this by saying that this is not part of our entertainment tonight. This is a, a real life situation. Um, earlier this evening, my broadcast colleague, Jerry the King Lawler, passed out while working here at ringside. Uh, he collapsed um, uh, on the ground. He was stretchered to the back where he received CPR. This is, a, is an extremely, extremely serious situation. And, uh, you know, Jerry, my friend, my, my prayers are with you. By God. And this was a serious, you know, you could, you could feel the emotions from Michael Cole, bro. Like, he was trying to keep it together. Like, that's, you know, that's someone he cares about, his colleague, someone, you know, that they, you know, obviously worked together for so many years and you know it, it's just one of those things where you care about someone and you see that happen right next to you you got to try to keep your composure you know it's it's very tough man very tough that's grace jerry lawler was okay and is still active in wrestling today one of the most heartbreaking moments in wrestling history was the passing of eddie guerrero of course one day after his death WWE held a special tribute show eddie guerrero was my uncle technically but we were brothers. We were three years apart. He was the big brother I never had. I was the, the little brother he never had. We always grew up with the dream of becoming tag team champions. And uh, this is tough, man. Excuse me. We finally, we got, we were able to let that dream come true. That dream came true here in WWE. That was a tag team for me that will never be replaced. I'll never have a tag team partner like you, Eddie, ever, ever again. Damn, One, Eddie's. Man. A wife and kids to know how much they meant to him it's all he ever talked about i know that uh somewhere eddie's gonna be looking down on this night proud that all the guys went out there and put on a show for him i miss you man this this is all just Early eating me up career, right now man carlito was accused of being lazy and not working hard enough rick flair confronted him and gave him one of those passionate speeches in wwe history to watch that hit the video on screen yeah i'm surprised they didn't put the the bray wyatt situation in there um because that's the most recent one where you know it was just you know everyone it was shocking news you didn't want to believe it and when we got to friday night smackdown it was just that was a tough smackdown bro jeez bro but it's 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 life you know what i'm saying it's this is why you're supposed to cherish life as much as you possibly can because of situations like this and uh i want to just you know say i love you guys you know what i'm saying i love y'all for supporting me for being there for the clutch squad for me and dub you know i know this has nothing to do with wrestling but when it comes to showing appreciation for life this is what this is all about you know at the end of the day and um you know i just want to say thank y'all to everyone that you know was showing love or the recent passing of my uncle and you know being there for me and that like i really do appreciate that we're a community we're a family and let's keep it that way let's love and cherish each other as much as we can because we never know when our day is you know our day comes so comment down below let me know some other like serious uh, wrestling moments you guys can remember or you watch live and it just it kind of it hits you you know what i'm saying it hits you like damn this is real life this is not a story this is this is you know something serious let me know if it wasn't listed in this video for sure but i appreciate all love and support Pro to 150k and i'm still gonna speak to youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see you on the next one peace